Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunland Board of Selectmen. We have, uh, I'd like to call the order at uh, 638. Um, we have a, um, it's uh, Monday, March 18th, 2019. It's a uh, light schedule, but an important schedule. Um, so and basically we're going, we're, we've completed basically all of our meetings with our departments. So we were, Sherry has put together for us a, uh, a proposed expenditure size of a budget. We also have a proposed revenue side. Um, and again, so the numbers on both, on the both uh, tally sheets are fluid. Now, now uh, is when we start the hard part, I guess. Um, so Sherry, you wanna, start us off with uh, the expense side budget and then we can go into the revenue sure um, the expense side reflects um, the department request for fiscal year 20 um, the contractual obligations are included um, on the accounting side uh, we have included a request for additional hours four hours from the FERCOG accounting program so you'll see an increase in that line um, you'll also note um, on the collector treasurer side that there's a decrease in that budget um, due to uh, susan retiring and a new hire coming in um, so that budget is down about eleven thousand dollars there um, let's see where are we <coughs> there's also included in this budget um seven thousand dollars for the for um, an increase for tax title and the OPEB um, actuarial study um, that's due this year um, on the next page what do we have uh, there's nothing significant as far as the elections and registration and town clerk budgets go um, same with committees and boards there slight increase um, 2.4 percent there uh, and under town buildings um, there's a slight increase there on the operating side of the um, library um, for cleaning and uh, phone costs and those things uh, Catherine had gone over with the board uh, when she met for her budget <coughs> presentation the police department budget um, reflects an increase of uh, $45,000 uh, for a new officer and $900 in the expense line for um, equipment for that officer Yep, 67. Yeah, 67, 274. <coughs> For the new officer, yeah. the only new line in there. Okay, so I'm on the right page. Yep, mm -hmm. it's an additional yeah, 45,000 for the new officer higher. So that's, so that's to, to Bruce's point, that's direct labor. Yeah, and included and with, and that, go ahead. Included with the other full-time officer wages. So 45 of that would be new office yeah. hire. Yep. Um, fire department. And there, there was no, there was no uh, decrease in the, the uh, part-time officer's pay, right? No. Not as presented. And not as presented at this time. Actually, there was an increase in part-time. Okay. I know he did follow up and send a schedule for the board's review, so I'll make sure right. that we take a look at that. Um, let's see, fire. Um, the only thing new in the fire line mm. is the um, $6,000 they included for physicals um, as part of the OSHA requirements. Um, he included that everywhere. Just uh, <laughs> You'll also see it in the capital budget right. too. So. 
I think the chief, if I could, Mr. Chair, as well as Sherry, I think the chief was pretty clear about the clarification from right. the state about that. Yeah. So where there is an ongoing expense for a new hire or a new appointment to the fire department, that physical is going to follow a new appointment, right. but these values may be very <clears throat> different. We have to include something for said physical, but it doesn't mean to Not be the, the physical freight. for the total department. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. In the building inspector line, you see a s slight increase in the alternate. Um, that was for additional hours to cover uh, Joe's vacation time. Um, that's something we can probably look at. Joe um, has announced his retirement April 1st, um, and so we are advertising right now for a new building commissioner. So, so Sherry, with, with the uh, sugar bush I saw Joe talking about foundation and stuff like that. I noticed that they're cutting trees down and stuff. Um, now they paid their building permit fee, which is two hundred and thirty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. How 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 are we going to man the inspectional services for that? There's a consultant's been hired for that. And how are we paying for that? Uh, Sugarbush pays for that. The developer pays for that. Yeah. <clears throat> so Sugarbush pays for the building inspector. Not the building inspector. The oversight. The team that's managing that project. R right, but I'm 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 asking, would we not have, <coughs> would, would we not have a, um. So wouldn't we wouldn't we hire a, an alternate building inspector or take the permanent building inspector and give him more hours to handle the inspectional services that need to happen at Sugarbush? Oh, sure. Well, how is that accounted for in the budget? Um, so Joe is accounted for for 15 hours. Right. And I think part of the reason he wanted to have someone else so that somebody would be on site every day to watch that and he would be coordinating with them both on and off site and that makes sense mm -hmm. so so that's accounted for in the budget it is i can double check with joe um and i'll meet with tom as well could you please to make sure that and and, and I, I mean it could be a one time yep. and, and what i'm saying it'd be a one-time expense that we could put as okay. a warrant article okay. and take it out of that two hundred and thirty thousand mm dollar -hmm. uh fee that's being paid if I could, Mr. Chair, that, that's a way of approaching the short-term oversight of the construction of that project. It's important to bear in mind that the ZBA has, as part of their um, conditions, that there is a fee paid for uh, peer review services throughout construction, mm -hmm. right. with the reporting authority being the building inspector. So we are going to pick up clearly some hours in the short run during construction, but the large uh, value of hours aren't going to fall on the taxpayers; they're falling on the developer, mm. with the building inspector being the oversight authority. Mm. So the okay. building inspector doesn't have to be on site every single day for every single bit. The building inspector has to approve, and that those hours are paid for by the applicant. And we can confirm that with the ZBA. They have a meeting the 27th. Yeah, I'm looking. <clears throat> do, do, do we pick who, who is being paid? So we basically have... Building inspector picked up. Yeah. The ZBA. Okay. Joe's very comfortable. It's not they are hiring their person, right. obviously right. their work and reporting to the town. It's yeah. not going like... That would not be good. No. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. It's, it's, it's like building the fox inspector. in the hen house. Right. Exactly right. It's the building inspector who chooses. Approves. Let me say this. Approves, <coughs> not chooses. Approves. Well, <coughs> someone that's been involved with a lot of construction projects in my private life, I would say that having the necessary oversight is a critical component mm -hmm. uh, because you can only get one shot to to build right. it right. It's very true. Not to say anything about the school roof falling down, but when you found out that the uh, that they nailed only one half of the nails that were required actually went into the sheathing and there's no lateral bracing and I can keep going yeah. fire coating and, and 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 
All right. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I hope so, I said it. Right. To, so, to your point, additional hours may well be a warrant article versus in the budget, which makes some yeah. sense. Mm. I, I'd <clears> rather <throat> have if, if, if or I'd rather hire a, an independent that's paid by me because I can stop paying that guy. Anyway. So yeah, could we need oh, to okay. talk to Bill. Oh, we, I'm uh, Joe. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, let's see, other protection. Uh, nothing significant there. Animal uh, under animal control, you'll see an increase of five hundred dollars for the Franklin County Sheriff's Department yeah. uh, for that program. Uh, So total protection is up 9.9%, $78,926. Highway superintendent, uh, highway budget, there was some increase there in wages uh, for seasonal, additional seasonal help and um, overtime and snow and ice for health and sanitation uh, nothing significant there as well a slight increase in the landfill monitoring contract $150 hmm. as well as the um, solid waste district assessment uh, the library um, budget this year included 5% increase for director wages and a 10.5% increase for support staff and um, a $1,500 ex um, expense um, increase for library expenses um, and that was attributed to um, materials. And then it's schools. Um, the elementary school budget is up 7.6% or $192,918. There was a slight increase in the transportation of $761. Uh, total budget $193,679, an increase of 7.4%. Uh, Franklin County. Now that, that budget still hasn't been voted, right? No, Correct. tomorrow night. Tuesday. Yeah. Tomorrow. And that doesn't include a second kindergarten teacher that appears is probably going to be needed. Right. May I ever say that? <clears throat> I, I can't obviously predict what we'll, we'll vote tomorrow night, but it might well be quite different. And I would not expect it to be less. Okay. The Franklin County Tech Assessment um, is down $64,777. I believe that was attributed to a decline in student Students. enrollment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This year we have a new line for Franklin County Tech and that is their debt assessment of $12,874. Um, and the Frontier Regional School Assessment is up uh, $4,953, a uh, transportation, I lost my line, there we go. Um, and transportation is up for Franklin, uh, for Frontier Regional, $43,098. Out of district tuition, that one's still a little iffy. I haven't heard anything for sure so that includes two students and um, transportation mm -hmm. um, the thing with the Smith folk is we usually hear after town meeting right yep so I believe we have one student that's graduating this year right. and I do two one graduate yeah, yeah and I heard that one might be moving as well so I don't know if there's any hmm. replacing them but I'll try to stay on that to the extent that I can. So, so one of the students is graduating? Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have that tuition to pay? We don't know if anyone else is going in. 
when the, the when do we when are we uh, require when are the when is your requirement to uh, to let us know? Uh, I'll check again with Darius. In um, I'm not sure, but I know we usually get the assessment after town meeting that we ran into that problem last year. Um, but I'll see if he he may know from the high school side of it. You know who's looking to. To go to Smithville because there's only a, a couple specific programs that are not offered mm -hmm. at Franklin Tech, right. and one of those programs may no longer be allowed by the state. Mm -hmm. The ag or the criminal justice, right? The criminal, criminal justice, justice one. Okay. I'll I'll um, look into that. Mm -hmm. Might be worth to note too that we should check with the superintendent to check to see if they're still in a program that they signed up for. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the theoretically, I mean, when when um, Dr. Nash was involved, Dr. Nash would check. So, All right, okay. See in the what program, I, can find right. out I agree. Yeah, that, that should be a, yeah. Um, so, from there, uh, so the total schools is up $180,893, or 3.9%. Under benefits insur and insurance, the um, county retirement assessment is up um, $26,844. Uh, the workers' comp is up slightly, $3,901. Um, the I think I had uh, Can you take a picture and actually pull it up and see the numbers? <laughs> yeah. they have a they have a, ma a magnifying yeah, app. You know. magnify the numbers. The, I brought my glasses. <laughs> the um, unemployment line uh, level funded that last year. Um, we spent seven thousand five hundred and seventy-seven dollars this year. Um, so far, we've spent three thousand eight hundred and nineteen dollars, um, and. I know in past we've used that as a buffer um, when we've run short on the employee health insurance side. So, um, but that might be something that we can take a look at. Mm -hmm. The town employee medical, um, as you are aware, we increased the um, town contribution side by 5% last mm -hmm. year. This budget also includes two family plans extra. Okay. So there's an increase of $70,331 in that line. If I could, Mr. Chair, Chair, those are budgeted for potential new enrollment, meaning Correct. that the, the, the opportunity for a new staffer could roll in at a family plan. Mm -hmm. Got it. And what was the actual increase to the uh, percentage from Maya on that? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Got it. So this represents actually the potential for two new enrollments, not an increase necessarily in the face value of today to tomorrow. And We're no just budgeting forward as opposed to, you know, hoping to not have a deficit. And no plan changes. No plan changes. I, I know um, I had heard that Hampshire um, kept their plan um, rates the same, but mm -hmm. they've um, implemented a lot of co-pays and right. different changes in, in their plan, so. I would piggyback on that if I could, Mr. Chair, that those changes from the Hampshire plan to existing enrolled members uh, is a stall right now at the uh, frontier negotiations. They canceled our last meeting because those, that information just came out in both the administration and uh, the bargaining unit had to, had to digest what that meant and then revisit their positions. So I'm happy to hear that we have no change uh, on the, f on the uh, retail side of our medical uh, expenses to our staff, but we, uh, we do have here some noise for the potential of two staffers. Uh, I'm just wondering, if, by back on the school thing, mm -hmm. I'm just looking like, because the elementary was up 193. Total schools, David, or? The total schools, though, was only up 180. Yeah. And if I net out, like add up everything under the 64,000, and then take the 64,000, I come up with like, I think it was like an 88 
dollar difference? Like, shouldn't the total schools be at least as high yeah, as the increase in the elementary? To take a look at the at the formula. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Excel gets wonky sometimes. Yeah, it does. And this point. one's been. Yeah. I, I know a it, it's a big that. work. Yeah, I was just looking at that. I'm like, wait a minute, how can the total be lower than the elementary increase alone? Yeah. Right. Good point. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. So, in, in, as long as we're in the category of schools, if mm. I could, you know, we have every single year the opportunity for enrollment increase or decrease uh, at the tech school. Yep. And because we ride on the and the, the cost of enrollment. We see a fair amount of noise in that. Two yeah. students, three students, one student, five mm -hmm. students. Right, it's up know, and down a it, lot. It's up and down a fair amount. I would also suggest that, so that, that's an important point to bring out as we talk about the actual budget. Mm, if, we, right. if we have a large graduating class, and we can project part of that probably from the elementary school moving forward, if you go six, you could suggest that the opportunity in five years is that tech school may see a bump or a decline. Right. right? Either way. Um, that said, in this frontier piece, we still see a modest increase, but it's also important to bear in mind that the frontier budget, we saw their, their kind of face value, a decrease of 70-ish thousand dollars when all was said and done, total expense to the town of Sunderland, but that's also formulaic because we had a, f a drop off of I, I, not in front of me, right? And it may be in here, but anyway, a drop off of students off the five year enrollment, mm -hmm. right? So that's important to bear in mind as well. It's nice to see what these numbers, it offsets the other increase. great point. It's nice to see these numbers uh, from both of those, but next year we could add two to Frontier, we could add two, meaning the five year right. enrollment. And then we could add someone. So there's there's volatility here, whereas there is um, some uh, slower noise in the elementary side. And I think that's important to bear in mind as well. We're, we're not getting yeah. off scot free yeah. on those other two schools in right. any way, shape, or form. And I think didn't they use some of their E and D? I think to yeah, I mean every, decrease yeah. the a little bit. Yeah, so. the, as as does Franklin Tech. And yeah. neither neither school that. district has presented their present neither school district has presented the use of E and D that's extraordinary. I think they're trying to pull back on yeah. those things and make it more formulaic. And that's that also is important so we don't see a big bump in a future year. Right. So and OPEB trust, um, that's kind of in and out. We fund that through free cash mm -hmm. that's part of our formula is so, up slightly so the opeb trust itself sherry this is the first year that we're using a fund manager our fees associated with that fund manager captured in this expense is that with a 428 bucks because this was managed by the town prior to right no this is strictly um it's a, I'm it's, trying it's to, the gas fee formula you it's need half to, of the retired got it from yep. the prior year, yep. Yep. It, it, it's formulaic. Got, so. it. Got it. So yeah, it's nothing for the administration. There. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and uh, Medicare, that's payroll driven. That's up slightely, two thousand eight hundred and seventy-four dollars. Uh, town insurance on the Maya side is down um, seven thousand seven hundred and forty-two dollars. Um, so from there, we are at Ms. Can I ask a question on that? The, the increase in the uh, county retirement assessment, is that because of more employees or because the assessment is based on payroll that's gone up? Or why is, why is there such it's an formula. increase in that? Yeah, that's a form, one of the formulaic things too, but I can I'll check on that and see what I can find out for you. Mine was just why with a question mark, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right here, it's like, it's, it's, why? With just a question mark. Yeah, it's you know, it like right? $16,000 the other years, and this yeah. year it's yep. 26. So yeah. I think that's one of those. Right, because it's a double digit increase. Correct. Yeah. I'll take a look yeah, at that. I why so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what else do we have? The fur cog assessment is up slightly um, $1,035 or 4.6% um, of our assessment. The senior center assessment is up five thousand nine hundred and twenty-four dollars. 
Um, Vets assessment is up slightly, $229. And soldiers and benefits, vets benefits is down a little, uh, $612. So we have a total operating budget with these uh, departmental requests of $7,859,360. The increase is $413,441, or 5.6% increase. And then after that, you have the wastewater treatment plant budget. With that one, we're currently out to bid for. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Those bids are due, I think, mid-April. Um, so hopefully I'll have numbers for you for the next budget. The contract's not up until January of 2020. So under purchase services, you'll see a 2.5% increase to cover the next contract period. Um, so that's a $4,966 increase. Um, you'll see under the debt and interest that it's starting to go down um, slightly. The library and public safety complex um, interest is down uh, $2,925 on the library side and $4,275 on the public safety side. That's, that's, that, if I could, Mr. Chair, that's an important number as a subcategory to look at. The, the mm. largest piece of value in the debt and interest right now is effectively uh, the library for the last two payments. They have two years left on the, on the principal note of that this being one, one more year. And then the following is the sewer relining, which is paid by sewer users. Mm. So if you look at the total debt schedule of the town, our total debt schedule is $244,000 and of that $244,000 30 plus thousand is paid um, by sewer users. Right. Energy is across, energy is, that when you see energy PC principal, energy PC interest, those are performance contracts and those feed back into the expense side <coughs> on the energy expense lines for those buildings that those energy measures have paid for. Mm -hmm. And again, the trajectory there is your energy conservation measures drop your exp expense line, you incur debt over the course of half or less than the life cycle of that of measure, and then those, those, those savings continue on. Yeah. So as we talk about debt, the total town budget of eight million four hundred thousand. We have a total debt of two hundred and forty-four thousand, of which one component's dynamic and one component's completely paid for from a side stream. Mm. I think again, I could talk about debt. It's like as a percentage. I go back to my early years in the finance committee when we were building, 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 and we had. 17, 18 percent of our total operating offset was debt. You look at 244,000 out of 8 million right now, that's not a bad place to be as we talk about these, this piece of expense growth. Right. That's not to say future debt is a bad thing. Future debt is going to be important to continue the important uh, support of the infrastructure of the town. So on the revenue side, can we talk, just review the calculation of the levy? Mm -hmm. So the fiscal year 19 levy limit was $5,317.60, uh, $5,317,673. So to that, we add 2.5% um, or $132,942. And new growth at thirty nine thousand six hundred and seventy one, and the debt exclusion for the public safety complex and the library of one hundred and seventy four thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. That gets us to this year's um, levy of five 
five million six hundred and sixty five thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars um, and you'll see that at the top of your um, estimate sheet there and then uh, the capital override uh, which the board hasn't voted yet of uh, one hundred and thirteen thousand one hundred and forty one dollars uh, our general government uh, it reflects the uh, prior three years final from the state which gives us uh, $677,550. On the education side, again, it's that three, prior three-year final that we use. Um, so that number is $1,175,776. Um, our local uh, receipts appropriated is 648923 does that include the building inspector's fees for Sugarbush? That's all. Uh, I don't believe we count that one this year. We yeah, can't it, count it, it this year. Received after the, yeah, we can't, it was received. We can't project on that. But I know what you're oh, saying. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, it will be accounted for in this year's final correct, budget. Correct. Yeah. Not next year's. Correct. Okay. Um, and for other um, available funds appropriated, we have the PEG. Um, Comcast PEG access of $53,000, sewer reserve um, $379,288. That number includes their budget and their debt. And the Title V fees of $5,063. Um, this year we won't be using any ambulance reserve. Um, that's all gone. Yeah, that um, we sense. used it all last year. Um, we're not planning on using anything from the assessor's overlay. I don't know that there's much there anyway. That's something that builds up over time. Uh, free cash to balance budget. Um, that's the formula that uh, the board uses, the 30%. That's $175,728. And from the o uh, free cash for the OPEP trust is the 32942 that's in the budget and out on this side. Um, out of budget expenditures, again, using the three-year estimates, uh, we have for the state assessments $239,122. Cherry sheet offsets $287,203. Other amounts to be raised, that's old, that used to be tax title. Yeah, Department of Revenue right. um, requires it be raised on the in the operating budget now. Okay. And then the allowance for abatements for the assess assessors of twenty five thousand. So the amount available for appropriation is eight million two hundred and sixty two thousand one hundred and eleven dollars, and the amount of the budgets that we received uh, for requests is $8,452,886, uh, which leaves us a shortfall of $190,775. Thank you, Sherry. Comments, Scott, Davey? I think if I could, Mr. Chair, the only comment that I would make about the use of uh, free cash as well as, um, which is formulaic, we have that in percentages with um, what's available. The other is uh, the use of a three-year rolling average for formula, excuse me, excuse me three-year rolling average formula for uh, cherry sheet revenues has kept us from big volatility on any given either political mm -hmm. cycle or budget year. Yep. And I, I, would, I would encourage the board as well as people who are watching and listening to recognize that that has uh, served us well and as we have in years past cut a little too high on those estimates or a little too low, those have shown up either in shortfalls or in the form of free cash, but nothing that's been 
extraordinarily outside of the range. And I would I would encourage us to stay in as we look at this hundred ninety thousand dollars shortfall. I would encourage us to stay using that that three year average. It's done well by us so far. Yeah. David. No general comments right now. There's just a lot, a lot to go over still, and some of the biggest pieces aren't quite finalized yet. So, okay, it'll be a challenge. But I, w <coughs> Peter, you had to say anything, Bruce? You're not going to talk. I noticed how you guys moved right up now. just slightly mm -hmm. from your previous positions. Nobody you came all the way up. Until everything gets finalized. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I would. I would. Uh, it's late, but there's still a lot up in the air. Right, a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. So after after our meeting last week, um, I was approached many times this past weekend at the ball, uh, basketball games uh, yes. about the uh, the budget, and I would highly encourage um, everyone. Um, who, who has, and which I said just past week, if you have a concern about the budget and what's happening at the elementary school, that you need to go to the meeting tomorrow night and voice okay. voice your opinion so so they they hear both sides. I mean those, and and I and I think um, that that's the important important part of our process is 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 stepping back for a second and listening to all sides state their case um, and and I know that the school committee had a very difficult job because they they will have to I'm sure at the end of tomorrow night they will have to um, vote on a budget yeah first pass yep. and they will have to take the recommendations from the school superintendent and the recommendations of the people that are talking and, the, and their, own, their own opinions. They'll have to vote a budget, whatever that is. I, we don't know yet. That's why it's hard for us to comment. So we thought it was important that we shared with the town that right now um, there's a projected shortfall of around $195,000. What does that mean? It means that we got a lot of work ahead of us right now. Um, and usually that's what, what happens. And we, we've listened to a lot of our departments have come in and they, they've had, you know, recommendations and, and, they, and they put forward what they thought that, did some, that was most important for them. But now, now, it's, uh, now is where we have to look at what monies that we have and how we allocate those limited resources. And we've been, I've been doing this for 20 years and I haven't, I haven't known it to be any different than this right now. So, yeah. Just one comment, Tom, you know, you have the needs of the elementary school, which we all know takes a lot of the budget, the high school, the tech school, and all takes a lot of the budget. The other side of it, as you know, you have a lot of elderly people that are living on fixed income, Social Security, mm -hmm. and any tax increase hurts them. Uh, if my mother-in-law, you know, not in this state, but in New York State, you know, a third of her income goes to her property taxes. And it gets harder and harder every year. Mm -hmm. And you know, you remember the days when, you know, someone's lived in town for 50, 100 years, their assessment was way lower than someone had just bought a house. We can't do that anymore. Yeah, right, right. Travels you know, I wish we could. You know, but we can't. You, you know, because of the modern technology and the modern laws and everything else. There should be some way, whether it's at the state level or the local level, that if you show a need, it can be accommodated on a property tax. That's above our level. But it's well, something it's, I think actually, the, it's funny you the Selectman's Association start looking at that and saying, you know, get some political yank. I wish we did it when we did have some political yank. Mm. And it, it's it, an ongoing problem. It, but it has to happen. 
because not it wasn't I would say within the last seven years to five years that the legislators actually looked at if you were over a certain age and had limited resources they were going to pass a law that um, you wouldn't be affected by a prop two and a half override vote. You know, I mean, that would be great. I mean, something that like didn't that. last long. But no, I, I know it doesn't. I mean, it's um, and and I I think well, personally, if we talk philosophically, I under, I, I do not disagree with you at all. I I would go one step forward away from what you said, though, and, and say that the state. The state needs to. If the state paid 100% of school regional school transportation, we don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. That's fair. I mean, right. that's our, a big our, chunk. Our, the, there, there's no problem. If the if if the state actually paid 50% of education, which probably they should. They, there there is a study that wasn't done too long ago that says that the, sh the state is shortchanging the funding of education by over a billion dollars. That's showing up in there is orange is one instance, you know, it's, all, the time. I mean, it's all over. Well, any of the rural areas, you know, right. the, especially where there's a push, you know, oh, we want you to regionalize, well, there's but it costs more for transportation, and then they back off on fully funding what they promised to fund. Well, without getting too deep in but, the weeds, there's also the question about the, the, the basic formula and the 83% mark, and the 83% yes. mark of the ability of the town of Greenfield to pay is a fair amount different than the 83% mark of the town of Weston to pay. Mm. It's the same formula. Into the town of Weston, it can. I'm sorry, Weston, if you're watching. The town of Weston. <laughs> the reality is, the town of Weston gets dramatically more in the way of state school aid than right. the town of Greenfield. And I use the town of Greenfield, knowing it's a city by charter. But still, if you look at it demographically, it was a fabulous and really intriguing presentation at Greenfield Community College last fall and it's been covered by the Boston Globe please buy the Boston Globe shameless plug and watch what's mm -hmm. going on with that because that formula that basic foundation formula that simple 83 percent robs tens of millions of dollars from poorer and rural districts yep. because it's a basic formula your ability to pay we had the EQB discussion before we've been burned by it but it's important to understand that at a, at a level that the legislators now are at least discussing it. So what is it? And the question I would find intriguing would be, what's the lobbying around that? Because if you rejigger any formula, someone is perceived as a, as a gainer and someone is perceived as someone who loses something. Right. And so that reality, is, it, was, it was striking to see what the total number was across the state budget, the state allocation, based on that bottom line foundation formula. It's like, huh. And it was the Boston Globe who had the piece that said, a tale of two cities. And they used Greenfield and Weston. And, and so, sometimes I, I, uh, I'll, I'll agree with you, Scott, is when you try, when you try to use one formula to uh, right. produce equal, and, and, all, and I, we've had this discussion, right. there's differences between equal and fair. And, and un unfortunately, Unfortunately, when, when, you, when you're involved in a finance committee or a, a board of selectmen, it, it's very heart-wrenching sometimes when you look at budgets and, and you know, look, it, it, anybody, I, I'll have the conversation with anybody. An educational facility has what? Has people. There's no, yep. and, and, what, and if you look at the budget, what's the biggest component of it's every budget? People, yep. because people make, because people make a salary, yep. or, or are paid a salary, and, that, and that's the largest component. Un unfortunately, um, if and I, I haven't gone through our budget, but I would say if you go through our budget, probably 65, 70 percent of our budget is directly related to salary and health care for those for those people. Um, so it, it's difficult. And, and, and you're right, Scott. I, I mean, I, it, it, it's heartbreaking when, when you think that we, we had a very influential state senator and state representative, but guess what? When you ta tally all the Western Mass legislators and the, and the Massachusetts legislators together, 
I think they equal the amount in Boston alone. Yeah, and, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. And, and I remember when the, the Speaker of the House came out here mm -hmm. and he was upset because he got behind those yellow things with flashing red lights. And they don't see those in Boston. And, and he didn't realize how many that we had out here. Um, but transportation counts. And, and that's an expense that they, don't, they do not see. Okay, anything else on the budget while we're here? Well, I'm sure we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll know more tomorrow. We'll know more tomorrow night, and as it, and and as we drill down on on the Smith Folk expenses as well. Yep. So, yep. Okay. Yep. Um. But we thought it was time to uh, let the town, the residents know what we know. Um, again, these are just preliminary numbers, and we haven't gone through the hard the, the hard the, the heavy total stuff yet. So. That being said. Uh, motion on the. Uh, well, move, we'll move on the uh, the uh, um, approval of the March 11th minutes. Uh, motion on those. Have a motion. All second. S and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. We have three zero. Old business. Um, Board of Selectmen updates. Scott, David. Uh, we had a personal committee meeting last week where we we're starting to dive into our preliminary report on that and going over uh, some of the towns that are in there and having or well, asking for some adjustments on that. So, um, and we have a ditch committee meeting on Thursday, so we're making some progress there. Good. So, culverts will be the next exciting topic. Excellent. <laughs> oh, we were holding that topic for you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the last, so last Tuesday's uh, negotiation uh, meeting with uh, Frontier and the uh, negotiating group uh, was canceled because of a lack of information, it was canceled by the negotiating group because of lack of information from the healthcare side. They have that information subsequently. And so we anticipate, I love the irony, we're back April 1st. So <laughs> <laughs> that said. For a special edition. <laughs> for a special edition. Um, I, I, wanna, I wanna say that I appreciate the pragmatic approach uh, that the negotiating unit's taking to this because with the plan changes, as Sherry mentioned, that Hampshire Trust has put forward, it can clearly have an impact. Anybody who's been through plan changes knows. Mm -hmm. There's a retail component to it, and it's like how much you use the benefits and what's the face value. So they needed to digest that across their bargaining unit, and uh, I applaud them for, for putting a pause on it because, frankly, that's where we're at. We're at the salary, and, and most of the other language is all cleaned up. Good. Anything else, Johnny? Um, if I could, Mr. Chair, um, no, that's all. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm all set. Um, Sherry? Streetlights are all in. Uh, no way. Is yeah. it brighter out there? We have 63 new um, LED streetlights that no. were installed on Thursday and Friday. Nice. So, um, so you have to drive around town a lot yeah, at night and so see. Yeah, so take a, a, just um, one complaint. Not really a complaint, but a... They're too oh, bright. The one out yeah. there is shining right in someone's bedroom. It happens. So. No cutoff. <laughs> yeah. Police station? No, right here. Right here. Right School right Street. Up. Yeah. No cut off. So um, they're coming back. I'm going to ask yeah, them to come put back. That on. Said, I've already sent the email. So, Good. and she just said, "Do you think they could just point it down a little bit more?" Yeah. So that she was very nice yep. about it. So. Good. Hmm. So hopefully. So that that's a good point. So we do have um, our old halogens and mercury vapors and whatever the old street lights were um, have been replaced. Now I got uh, the um, so the town is responsible for the lights now and their maintenance. So if you have a concern or problem, you need to uh, call the uh, Sleckman's office and, and we've contracted with a local community that's gonna come in and, and service the lights. So we'll, we'll take care of it. But uh, also let us know if you, uh, at, you know, give the uh, lights a, a few days to make sure that they're in the right places yep. and yep. that uh, they're doing the job that they need to be done. So they, they are new fixtures. 
Anything else? That's it. Any other comments? After a marathon last week, we can go if we choose. Look at that. Unless yeah, you want to stand around for a while. Two things, Mr. Chair. One, uh, of course, there was a memorial service for Jim Williams Sr. Mm. So uh, a, a pause and a recognition of his long-term uh, commitment both to the town but also family and farming. And then secondly, it was Helen Rodak's 100th birthday. Wow. wow. That was in the paper this, today. So the celebration, I think, was on Saturday. Huh. I saw oh, balloons. Happy birthday. I saw balloons. Yeah. So as a landmark, as there is pause for passing, there should be a cause for celebration. Yes, sir. I went to the uh, service for Jim Williams, and I just wanted to add that it was uh, mentioned by a couple of folks how a large, important role he played in uh, not just farming in the town in the area, but also land preservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, yep. and in the, the APR and the development and use of the APR program, and that a lot of the open space we have in town and also in surrounding towns. Um, reflect his efforts over many, many years. Good point, Peter. It was, you know, it's easy to think of him in all the life as a farmer, but land preservation was another one of the things that he really made a contribution for. Um, one of the um, good things when you're a selectman is that you um, sometimes have to make or give presentations and I shared with Jim a, uh, the town's appreciation for his, um, as our oldest, at the time, oldest town veteran. Um, on Memorial Day, um, I was able to uh, meet with Jim at his home, and uh, he had his uh, Marine Corps uniform out from back in the day, and. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to uh, attend the uh, um, Veterans Day um, service that we had. He wasn't feeling well that day. But when you have an opportunity to, to talk to um, a lot of our residents, it's one, it's one thing when People say, "Well, why would why would you want to be a selector?" Um, and there probably there are a lot of reasons why you don't want to be a selectman. Um, but when you have an opportunity to uh, have ha have to talk and to spend time like, with someone like Jim, and it happens quite often, um, you appreciate everything that they've given to the community as a whole, not just the town of Sunland, but the community around us. And, and they really, they really do. We have many residents, um, people live in Sunland, that make such a strong impact in a lot of different ways. And, and as a selectman, sometimes you get to see that. And I, that's one, one reason if anybody ever thought about why to run, um, just to be around that energy is kind of invigorating sometimes. So. And, and oftentimes, if I could, Mr. Chair, filled with teachable moments. To who? Every time. Yeah. Every time. It can be invigorating in a lot of ways, like old-timey fighting, or it can be invigorating like, oh, I didn't know that. Thanks very much. All of them teachable. Absolutely. All right. So at this time, I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion. Second. A motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, we're out.